Let's talk about the Proto-Dravidian religion. We see people having reconstructed the Indo-European religion and its mythology. Let's do the same for the Proto-Dravidians. It might shed light on the origin of certain aspects of Hinduism. Now, one of the things that you will notice, and I'm warning you, is that it's mainly the belief system and practices. There are no certain gods that are in common between each Dravidian community that you can reconstruct. It's not like the Indo-European cultures. But that being said, we can reconstruct something and get a general picture of what the Proto-Dravidian religion is like. So the methodology we use is that we take each branch of the Dravidian cultures and then find common traits. Of course, in the areas dominated by mainstream Hinduism, we have to look towards the rural areas where much of the basal folk customs are preserved. So one of the things you'll notice about these Proto-Dravidians is that they were very animistic. They had a belief in spirits that are found all over nature, and some of these spirits may be the ancestors of people who have died, and these spirits could be malevolent or benevolent or ambivalent, and they needed to be appeased with food offerings and often with bloody sacrifices. Sometimes these spirits would possess people that would cause them to be in an ecstatic trance. Other times these spirits caused other paranormal phenomena like illness, sickness, death amongst people or animals. And then likely we had the proto dravidians using a diviner, a medium to communicate with the spirits and doing some sort of exorcism. We can actually reconstruct this belief from the following cultures. So let's look at the Nilgiri religions as their tribal and may have preserved some of the most ancient practices before the arrival of the Vedic culture into South India. So we have, for example, the Aravar, who are described as being animistic and believing in demons, worshipping trees, animals, stones, and hills. Admittedly, you will see that most of these uh, people have been Hinduized. The Malasar worship a spirit called Malung in the form of a stone encircled by a wall including that they offer him goats and chickens. You will see like these tribes, for example, the Mudagar would worship objects found in nature. The Kadar believed in a Mala Devatam or a Makannimar deities, which were amounting as many as seven. And they were worshipped for a provision of supplies of food. And they also worshipped tree spirits called Muni. And then there are also regional village deities. Now you see certain practices amongst the Tamil and Telugu cultures, but I'll get into that later. Let's look at some other tribes, Gones of central India. From their beliefs, it's understood that they believed in spirits that were created to preside over various aspects of nature. And these gods and demons reside everywhere in nature. We have like Bhimsan, a spirit that dwells in the fields and in watery places. And then Dulhadeo, who is a god of the earth. But according to the legends, he was a living bridegroom, a gone bridegroom, that was either struck by lightning or killed by a tiger, and then was later deified, something you will see in Dravidian cultures. The Kotas, which are not Central Indian tribes, but rather of the Nilgiris, they have a village diviner, thus suggesting a belief in the spirits. And we have one source mentioning a diarrhea goddess. You will see this disease mother concept later. And because they were hunters, they have a deity or a spirit presiding over hunting. And the diviners are possessed by gods during ceremonies like the rain ceremony. And then Tulu, we have the famous Bhutakola, which is like the Theyam in Kerala, but it uses other gods, including the mainstream Hindu gods. So let's dive into the the popular Dravidian cultures, namely Tamil, Malayalam, and Telugu. We do have a belief in spirit possession. For example, the dance Veriyattam, where a spirit is said to possess a woman. And then you also have a similar dance called Veriyattal. Ayanar is a god who's accompanied by spirits, and to him, bloody sacrifices are offered. 
and he is worshipped for the protection of the village, namely from evil spirits. You have the famous ritual Theyum, in which a goddess, a spirit of a goddess, possesses a man, who then starts dancing frantically, and it is actually a beautiful ritual. Interestingly, the original worship of Murugan was more of a spirit worship, where the Velan, the priest, would get possessed by Murugan and then start dancing frantically. And this is reminiscent of the folk beliefs of the proto Javidians. There was also a prevalence of hero worship, for example, Kanagi. She is worshipped as a goddess, essentially. And then you have the general village deities that we will get into later. Amongst the Telugu-speaking people, you do have a belief in spirit worship, where it's usually a woman dies prematurely or in a natural death and then comes back and haunts a village. Maybe people get sick or cattle die, and then there's a diviner or a exorcist that goes into a trance or tries to communicate with the deity. And then usually there's some rituals involving a bloody sacrifice to appease the deity or the, appease the spirit who is then worshipped as a deity. And oftentimes they are female and they serve as uh, protectors of villages and children, namely from disease. Though we do have uh, male deities, and this ties to hero worship, for example, Katmanaju, who defeated the king of the Nellor district. And a similar practice of worshipping uh, women who died but their husbands are living is called Perantalu. These shamanistic practices are usually found in the very rural areas of the Telugu-speaking region. Now, related to the spirit worship is the concept of disease mothers, which I touched upon previously. And fun fact, it is the origin of the Saptamatrika cult. From the modern Dravidian cultures, we see where we have goddesses that preside over certain diseases like smallpox or cholera. And recently, in Tamil Nadu, we see the worship of a personification of the coronavirus. And often to please these deities, food and bloody animals are offered. And this is not just in the Telugu and Tamil areas, but in the tribal places, including the Gones and even the Austroasiatic speaking people like the Mandas or Santals. So in Tamil Nadu, you know of Mariamman, the goddess of rain, and more importantly, smallpox. Telugu, we have several. Palamirama is the main one, and she presides over smallpox. And one of the characteristics is very, is that she's very angry, and disease is how, he express, how she expresses her wrath. And to appease her, it's usually like buffalo or chicken sacrifices to save a sick person. Now, you also notice that these goddesses are very much connected to the earth, which is no surprise. And this earthly connection ties into them being fertility goddesses. And seen as they preside over harvest and children. And then amongst the Gones, for example, to name a tribal culture, we have Devi or Mata, who is their earth goddess. And she too presides over fertility and diseases. Though the Austroasiatic people also have disease mothers as well, probably because it's a archetype or cultural contact. And these disease mothers, as mentioned, are also guardians of the village or Grama Devata. And they're sometimes male deities, but it's usually female. And I believe that the village goddesses may be seen as uh, clan deities, which is something the Gon people have. And this is on the assumption that villages are where clans would just settle and where everyone is kind of closely related. But this is my speculation. Now, there's not much on their iconography, but from the customs of the Telugu and the Gons, we see that the spirits may have been represented by crude objects like clumps of stones, tree branches, etc. But only in more elaborate Hindu worship do the goddesses get a full-on image. And you can see how crude these objects are in the pictures to the left. You can see that Poturaju is a small uh, post that's near a stake. They may have had, had shrines which may be ancestral to temples, but this is my speculation. 
the proto javidian word for temple, at least assuming they had one, is good or goody, which is also the word for hut or inhabitation. And I believe the Sanskrit word kutika derives from it. And it could be that huts were used for shrines for idols or like tombs for the dead, considering how they worship the dead. But again, mainly speculation. So to summarize, the Proto-Dravidian gods were mainly spirits that are either good or bad. These spirits are found all over nature, and some of them could be spirits of the dead, and they play a noticeable role in the affairs of the living humans. The female spirits tend to be connected with the earth, fertility, disease, and protection. And some form of spirit worship uh, included hero worship, where someone who died of a noble cause was deified, sort of. And often these spirits would be exercised or appeased with a bloody animal sacrifices, like a buffalo or a chicken, or perhaps grain-related items. And it is possible that each proto dravidian village or clan or community had their own presiding spirit or deity. And shamans or priests served as mediums to communicate or appease a spirit. And it is also possible that these spirit deities would possess people and cause illness or other paranormal phenomena. And from a general observation, these proto Javidians might have believed that spirits dwelt in trees and then therefore had reverence for trees. And it could be that they kept cult objects under trees or in hut shrines, but this one is a bit of speculation. From the analysis, we see that a good amount of the ancestral Dravidian animistic beliefs shaped Hinduism, such as the worship of Ganesha or Skanda, the worship of the Hindu goddesses, maybe some aspects of Shiva, and many aspects of Tantra. And if we're assuming that the Indus Valley seals show yoga, then yoga on the assumption that the Indus Valley was Dravidian, though this is a bit contested, would be from this animistic practices. So is hero worship, and perhaps by extension the concept of avatars, tree worship, and certain animal worships. Idol and temple worship may have also originated from the proto dravidians but this is, again, speculation. Aspects of Bhutavaidya, or um, demonology, or exorcism of spirits that involve meat, could be traced to the proto dravidian animistic practices. And that it's it for the video. Hope you guys liked it.